Today I'm going to be talking about a couple of tools that we have been working on over the past few months, which aim to help you build faster Angular applications. So we can optimize the network performance of our app just by reducing the number of bytes that we're transferring over the wire and uh, reducing the number of network requests that we're also sending. But something new that we have been working on together with Manfred from the community to uh, introduce, and which we are going to introduce as part of version 8, is differential loading. So uh, there are a couple of benefits of this. First of all, we need to ship fewer polyfills, right? And on top of that, we will not have to down-level the modern syntax, which is not only going to make your bundles smaller, but it is also going to make them faster to execute. Here is how differential loading works. So first, the browser sends, of course, request to the server. The server delivers the HTML, where there are two script tags, one for modern browsers and one for legacy browsers. From there, the browser, depending on its supported capabilities, it chooses one of these script tags, it downloads the associated JavaScript, and right after that, executes it. And we have a script tag with attribute no module. This is just a hint for newer browsers to not download this bundle if they already have ESM uh, ECMAScript 2015 module support. So we have two properties in the Angular CLI which allow you to set the minimum supported version that you would want us to ship to provide for you and the maximum one. All right, so now let us go to even more exciting part, which is code splitting. Code splitting is in general one technique which is a subset of larger set of practices called lazy loading. So two, the two specific practices for lazy loading JavaScript are component level and route level code splitting. For example, we have ngx loadable, which on about 2.2 kilobytes of JavaScript will allow you to do that. We also have lazy AF <laughs> from uh, Aaron Frost, who developed this widget, uh, this module, and uh, it's providing uh, the, same, the same functionality, so it's pretty much depending on your own preferences which one you're going to use. Route level code splitting. So this is something that I hope pretty much everyone is already doing it, right? How many of you are using route level code splitting with the Angular router? Right, I hope, I hope uh, I'll encourage you to use it even further around right now, because this is probably the most efficient way to shrink your bundles. Pretty simple, and we can already use this in Angular by using the load children syntax, the load children property in the route declaration. In version eight, we want to enable more, we want to take advantage of modern standards, so we, want, we enabled uh, dynamic imports, which can let you do pretty much the same thing, but by using the uh, ES2015 module syntax. That's why we have techniques such as prefetching. With prefetching, in the background, we can download the JavaScript associated with pages that we suppose that the user may need next, and just after that, provide them from the browser's cache once the user actually uses them, when, once they navigate to these pages. So there are a couple of more efficient prefetching heuristics that we can use instead. For example, we can prefetch only the visible links on the page because if the user is going to navigate somewhere, it's very likely that so that they click on a visible link, right? We can use predictive prefetching. This is something that I'm particularly excited about and I'm going to discuss in a little bit. Or we can prefetch a link, like the JavaScript associated with a specific router link, or mouse over. 